Well, hey guys, Thorzax here, and uh, we're sitting down and we're starting out a casting session of the Lee uh, 69 caliber. Now, in the last video, I called it the 69 grain. It's it, actually I really don't know how many grains this is. I'll have to weigh it, but it is it's 69 caliber. Um, also made a mistake too. I uh, called the Lyman mold a Lee mold, and actually it's a Lyman mold, the pellet mold. Uh, had a lot of things on my mind when I made that video, so I should have, you know, I should have proof watched it before I went went and uploaded it. So but anyway, um, so yeah, so this is what we're doing. We're uh, we're making some pumpkin balls here, and. Uh, you know, I guess they hit with authority. I mean, it's a real crowd pleasers. You know, chicks dig it. Um, you know, it's the thing to do. All the all the cool kids got them. So we're gonna go ahead and give these a try. Um, one thing I wanted to expand on a little bit here, and I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence here. You know, so I just want to kind of have a one to one maybe. You know, with the audience here, um, I made the disclaimer. You know, this, this this stuff that I'm doing right here is for my own use, and and that's true. And the things that I do here and the methods I use are for me. Now, it may not be for you. That's fine. If you've never done this before, get instruction. Get around somebody who uh, who has done it. You know. Um, you know, I, I I'm I'm just trying to look out for people in general, you know, because if you don't know what you're doing with this stuff, it's it's dangerous. You know, this 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 has the potential to, to really harm you. And uh, like I said, you know, not to insult anybody's intelligence out there, but, you know, I don't really know you. You know, I don't know if you have, um, you know, you got problems with your coordination. Um, I don't know if you're collecting Social Security because you have a mental problem. Um, you know, I don't know anything about you, okay? Uh, you're just my audience, and I appreciate every, each, each and every one of you. Uh, but I don't want you guys to make the mistake of just jumping off the deep end and going in and starting to do this because, well, you've seen me do it. You know, there, there are little subtle things that I do off to the side that, you know, don't necessarily get on video. And, uh, you know, maybe they should, but... Anyway, I want to give you a little looky-loo looky on these. Uh, as you can see, you know, round ball, 69 caliber. And what you do is you load these in a shot cup. And you got your powder down below it. You know, you got your wadding that it sits in, and then you got your powder down below that, and you stick it in the shell. And then you uh, put a um, overshot card over the top of it, and then roll crimp it. And that's the way I'm going to go ahead and make these. Uh, I got to look for a suitable powder though. Other than that, uh, it's kind of slow going. You know, I mean. This is just a single cavity mold. I should have bought two of them. They're cheap enough. I mean, they're only like 18 bucks. Which, you know, I mean, I'm going to tell you something. You know, you go out there and you start pricing stuff. And, uh, you know, you can spend a lot of money on um, on ammunition. And they're, they're really not that expensive to make, you know. Make your own uh, stuff here, you know. And, you know, have it perform quite well, you know. I don't know about you, but if I took a shot at 50 yards and I was able to hold like four inches or something like that with one of these 69 uh, caliber round balls, that spells dead deer all day long. I don't care what you guys <laughs> say about it. That 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 monster right there, whew, that hits with a lot of authority. And you got a lot of kinetic energy right here. And, uh, you know, they're kind of fun for blowing up watermelons, too. So, you know, um, 
And that's pretty much the, the course that I'm going in. Now the metal that I'm using in this, I had to go out and purchase. Uh, I didn't have any, you know, pure lead. And I'm going to tell you something. If you haven't dealt with the folks at Roto Metal, um, you guys are really missing out. They are just, they're great. They're great people. They, uh, they get your order out right away. Um, anything over a hundred bucks is, you know, free shipping. Uh, I bought 50 pounds of this material and, um, you know, they set it all in and it came in pellets. It didn't come in the bars. It came in pellets. So it was really easy to put in my, my casting furnace. That's another subject I want to talk to you guys about. Casting furnaces. Um, this casting furnace right here is probably the last one I'll ever buy. I, mean, I spent a lot of money on it and it's, you know, it's quite consistent. It has consistent heat. It's got the whole nine yards to it. Um, you can get mine with a Lee Pro 20. That They work great. There's nothing wrong with them. I suggest that you get a PID for it and so you can control the heat. But one thing that's really nice about you know this pro mill is when I took all the alloy out of it that I had and I've noticed this uh, on on other things so I, I mean I, I melted down one time a whole bunch of linotype and put it into bars and when I went and drained all the linotype the walls of the inside of the uh, of the furnace uh, stay clean I mean it, it stays clean nothing sticks to that I mean, I don't know what the heck they used as a as a uh, coating on the inside of that thing, but man, I'll tell you what, nothing sticks to it. Um, so it's really easy to change alloys without cross contaminating your uh, your melt. Uh, that's one thing. Or you know, for the price, I mean, you can get two uh, you know Lee pots Pro Twenties. Um, you know, and, and just have one for pure lead and the other one for alloys. I've seen guys do that too. Uh, I want to give out a little shout out. Uh, Georgia Boy 44. Uh, I've been enjoying a lot of his videos about casting and such. You know, he's he's really getting into it. You know, and um, he's beginning to discover that you know uh, these ammunition companies. They charge a lot of money for something that you can just make at home. You don't need to go out and spend a bunch of money on bullets. You can make bullets. I mean, you know, handgun bullets, um, rifle bullets. You know, you can make them. Just make them. Just cast them up and make them. I mean, for 95% of our shooting, cast bullets are going to work just fine. You know? Uh, they're they're going to work just fine. Uh, and, and actually, you can exceed the quality that you can get from, you know, the manufacturers in making your cast bullets. Because you can tailor make them to the size that you want. You can fit them to the chamber mounts of your pistols. Uh, you can use uh, different lubricants on them. Um, different style ch gas checks. Uh, or, or not, you know, try them without gas checks, even though it's a gas check design. Uh, you know, there's there's lots of you know lots of little things you can do. So I'm really kind of excited for George Boy out there because he's he's starting to really discover this whole thing that it's it's just a it's an awesome you know it's an awesome craft to learn. I mean, you know, it really is. Saves you a lot of money and uh, it's fun doing it. Um, and in the end, you gain knowledge. You know, you go out there and you're you're really using your firearms. You know what I mean? You're not just uh, going out and buying a box down at Walmart, going out for the, you know, Saturday afternoon or whatever with your buddies, and, you know, firing a peach basket size group at, like, you know, seven yards, and then high-fiving each other, and then going down to, you know, uh, Denny's and have a slice of pie, and, hey, we're the, we're the greatest shots in, you know, the county or whatever, you know. Um, you really start to see that, that shooting really is a discipline and it really is a lot to do with the development of your personal marksmanship and that's where this comes in play you know I mean being able to make your own ammunition you get to practice a lot 
I mean, and for dirt cheap too. I mean, I've got nine millimeter down to about a dollar seventy-five a box. I mean, that that's dirt cheap. Fifteen rounds for a dollar seventy-five. I mean, you can't beat it. Uh, it takes my time, but as you guys know, you know, I have the equipment available that it's not really a pain. You know, I mean, I I can go ahead and crank out a thousand rounds of 9mm, 125 grain, you know, uh, truncated cone lead bullets with six, six cavity molds. I can make those about a thousand rounds in an afternoon and have them go through my uh, star lubricizer. That only takes about an hour. And, um, you know, I'm done. I'm ready to shoot them. Um, not a big deal. I see that Uncle Jim now is going down the road of cast bullets, and I think that's great. Uh, you know, Jim, he lives out there in the tundra. He lives out there where men are men. You know what I mean? There's open spaces all over the place and, uh, you know, there's lots of varmints and, and pests and things like that that, you know, a guy needs a firearm for. Um, I kind of envy him in a way, you know. I mean, uh, being able to, you know, have that sort of thing available to him. Um, and just having the open space in order to shoot, uh, that's a that's a great thing. You know, I see, oh, by the way, good shout out to Full Lid Taco, Mike. This thing works great. Um, works just as good as the one I went and bought for leather working. That, you know, that uh, that um, Vito out of TV, uh, Marcus over there, you know, went and recommended. Um, yeah. For some reason, I just can't seem to throw this one away, though. <laughs> I've made a lot of bullets with this baby. I mean, a lot. <laughs> I have made lots of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely got my money's worth out of that axe handle, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it works just as good as the day I got it out and started hammering her out some... Uh, you know, some three. I, you know, my first molds were the 357 uh, Lee hollow point, um, 158 green hollow point. That was my that was my first mold that I bought, and I got it at a place called uh, uh, Value Mart in in Bremerton. I think it was like 12 bucks, and uh, I got it home, and I, you know, it was just a single cavity. And man, I'll tell you what, I was using a, a dipper, you know, and uh, and, and, and just a, a, a lead pot, and I was just dipping them, hand dipping them. I, I didn't really know what I was doing, you know. And, you know, I found out how to lubricate them, uh, lubricate the molds that way, what smoking the mold is all about, um, you know, how to get quality loads, watching your heat and things like that. You know, I developed that early on, and then... Later on, I started buying more expensive equipment, and that's usually how it goes. Um, one thing I will say, there is the king of cast bullets out there, and that's Elvis Ammo. Elvis, uh, I'll tell you what, he's got a technique that he uses um, synthetic two-cycle oil, and he uses it to um, lubricate the... Uh, you know, the, the, the screw here on the spew plate, and then he puts a little touch here and a little touch there on the pins. And I'm going to tell you what, that works perfectly. For years, I used candle wax. I mean, for, for the longest time, I used candle wax. And, you know, this works. You know, and also, you know, I mean, that, that oil, it conditions your mold after a while. It'll season it. So... You know, that's pretty smart of, uh, of old Elvis, man. Elvis has got a lot going on. And I've noticed another thing, too, about Elvis. He's starting to move up in the world. You know, he got himself a Dillon uh, 650, which is, uh, you know, pretty cool. Um, he, he's, he's all jazzed up about it, and there's nothing wrong about that. Um, I prefer the 550. It goes at the speed that I like to go. Um, another thing too is that uh, when it comes to automatic bullet feeds and uh, you know um, unless you buy one that that you know actually turns the bullet over and feeds the bullet you know right side up down the tube and stuff I think that 
you know, the Lee one, it, it, it works. But the thing is, though, you're, you're loading a tube. So every time you have to pick up a bullet and put it down on the tube, you might as well just be picking up a bullet and putting it on top of your case and then pulling the handle. So you're not really saving any time there because you're loading your tubes. So, you know, same thing with primers. Um, you know, there's a certain time that you have to sit down and you get your primer flipper out and, uh, you know, you start, you know, filling up your primer tubes. And that takes a long time. It's a tedious job and it's boring and, you know, I mean, you know, you want to load like 500 primers, you know, because you're going to go ahead and get the ball rolling and everything uh, to make some ammo. Uh, what I did is I went ahead and got a, a little, little Javits uh, that... Um, it's called the Viva Prime. It's from uh, Franklin Arsenal. And I'll tell you what, uh, once you get the, ha uh, the knack of using that thing, you'll never, ever look over your shoulder again. You'll never go back to picking them up with a primer feeder. Okay, we got a little bit of a freeze up there. So. Um, let's give her a little stir here. Sometimes just stirring it up is enough to break whatever little piece of crap or something that's down there on the stem. And, you know, that breaks everything up and gets you rolling again. So anyway, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and make, uh, make some uh, pumpkin balls. I'm going to sort out the coals, the ones that have wiggly lines in them and all that stuff. And throw them back in here. Um, like I said, if you're looking for uh, material and uh, you're going to buy new, uh, I suggest going with Rotor Metals. Those people are just great, you know. Tell you what, they're turning out perfect now. So anyway, that's my video. And for right now, this is Thor's Axe. Be safe out there. And like I said, I didn't want to offend anybody. Just make sure that you read, read, read. Okay? And if you are getting into reloading or if you're going to get into uh, making your own ammo, um, it's best to get some, get some instruction. You know, get out there with someone who has done it before. And, uh, you know, kind of learn the little, uh, you know, things, the ins and outs about it, you know? Because uh, if you don't, you know, you're just basically flying blind. And this is not something that you want to fly blind with, you know. I mean, uh, you know, you might, you might watch me do this, but you see, then again, I'm not there. You know, you could be doing it and, uh, you know, you could be, you know, doing whatever, but I'm not there to say, no, 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 don't do that. And then you have an, you know, you have an, you know, you have a, a, a problem. Um... So, you know, anyway, eh, don't mean to sound like a safety sally, but, you know, uh, I just don't want to see, like, people getting hurt. So, anyway, this is Thor's Axe. I'm checking out, and we'll get this uploaded. All right, until next time, Thor's Axe. See you later.